Hello, everybody. My name is Harold Strong. I'm president of the Medical Innovation Collaborative in North Texas. Happy to have you here today for a really great conversation with Dr. Anisha White. Dr. White is at the, a, a, the new name is HS, UNT HSC in Fort Worth. And uh, you'll see by this cool caption that she has a lot of responsibilities. But we're here to talk about a lot of cool things from innovation to her engagement at uh, HSC. So good morning, Dr. White. How are you today? Good morning. I'm happy to be here uh, and uh, thrilled to be talking about innovation as it's so needed, especially during these times. And so I'm looking forward to our discussion. Excellent. You know, we've had a couple of conversations off and on about the future of health and what that looks like. And I don't think there's a better time than now to talk about what the future of health means. Uh, traveling is diff difficult. We're stuck in our homes. We can't travel as we used to. Going to doctors can be dangerous now. So, so this conversation will be a lot of fun. So let's dive into it, shall we? Yes. Um, I asked five basic questions to everyone that we've talked to so far. And those questions all revolve around how did you get to where you are now, who your customer is, what is their unmet need, what's the gap, and then at the end of it, what do you do for fun? And this will be the, the same format that we have today. So when in light of that, how did you get to UNT HSC? Well, um, with most things that I experience in life, I like to call them a journey. So, um, it, and it continues to go forward. Uh, but prior to uh, UNT HSC, I worked in uh, Florida for some time at the University of Florida is where I did most of my graduate studies and also at Florida A&M University. Oh, and then um, I spent some time uh, as a, an assistant professor at Mercer University in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So after uh, doing a lot of research there, definitely working with students, I have a passion for working with students and encouraging them to innovate. I um, moved on and, and took on a position here in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area at the UNT Health Science Center. Uh, and I really enjoyed working here uh, for the past, it's been about five and a half years. Wow. And, um, and definitely what's been most exciting is the innovation challenge that I offer in one of my courses. And then also a project that we'll talk about today called Health Connect that really aims to address gaps in care. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit about the project that you have coming up at HSC. That's tomorrow, correct? Yes, so at the Health Science Center uh, within my uh, pharmacy class, we have 16 teams that will be competing to address some of the top healthcare challenges in the United States. We are mm -hmm. thrilled. They are going to be applying their knowledge that they've learned in various pharmacy courses, and they're addressing uh, issues related to uh, uh, items such as on the mental health crisis uh, in America, our caregiver crisis. As we know, we have an aging population, and so we need to innovate and come up with great ideas to support our older persons. They'll also be talking a little bit about technology and AI, because we know that uh, the uh, products are soaring in that area, but how do we bring everyone together, healthcare professionals, as well as patients with regard to use? of um, these new technologies that are coming out. So we're looking forward to that right. uh, challenge tomorrow. So it sounds like uh, as we move from your journey to your customer, the customer is the student. And the student is being exposed to a variety of different things from the technical component of pharmacy, but also how to uh, use that technical performance to the benefit of their patient base. Can you talk a little bit about who that customer is and how you work with them? Yes, exactly. Uh, we equip the students with so many skills within the classroom, but our ultimate goal is for them to go out into the real world and to make a difference, to really make a positive impact in the lives of patients. And so this innovation challenge gives them the opportunity to use those tools. And we've used um, design thinking as sort of a foundation to get them to become uh, more creative mm -hmm. in thinking about how to put all these puzzle pieces together and apply them in the real world uh, to positively impact patients. 
you know, I've had conversations with uh, a lot of instructors at medical schools and, and one of the challenges they have is to help students not be technical or mechanical in their delivery, but to be more uh, intuitive and um, uh, quality uh, in terms of the relationship with the patient. So while tools are being created for pharmacy students, do you see a need for empathy and those types of things to be part of that process? Because most pharmacists don't engage directly with the customer unless you step up to the window, explain, explain what this prescription does for me. But can you kind of talk about the additional value, the qualities, the empathy that pharmacy students would need in their professional environment? Yes, um, definitely a critical uh, skill to obtain is to have that empathy. We encourage the students to put themselves into the user's shoes. And in this case, mm -hmm. the user is most times the patient. Mm -hmm. And so really thinking through, you know, we can always come up with bright ideas, but um, in terms of usability, uh, are, is the patient going to struggle with that particular idea or product because yeah. of their age or maybe because of uh, limitations in access or uh, limitations in affordability? It, with medications, oftentimes we find affordability issues. Right. And so we do challenge the students to think about what would it be like if I actually place myself in the uh, shoes of uh, a potential uh, user of this new product or this new idea or service that I'm proposing? Right. And, and you, we talked about it earlier and you mentioned AI uh, just a few minutes ago. In this new future of health world that we're kind of approaching, thanks to COVID and other things, we, we are seeing where the CVSs of the world and the Walgreens of the world are becoming the health providers at a neighborhood local level. And so that means that that pharmacist theoretically would be the point of contact between the patient and that care that the patient is expecting to get. So, so how do you see future of health impacting pharmacies, pharmacists, and the patient? How, how do you see that in the near future or midterm? Yes, well, you uh, hinted towards a great point, and that is that pharmacists are extremely accessible. I mean, mm -hmm. every almost every corner that you look on, you'll see yeah. uh, a chain pharmacy. And, and there was a recent study that was published in JAMA uh, just a few months ago that highlighted the fact that pharmacists are actually more accessible than primary care physicians. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about who is available to provide care services, whether it's preventive care, whether it's counseling on your medications, whether it's uh, helping patients to get access to medications, it's the pharmacist, your friendly yeah. pharmacist. Yeah. And so uh, we really try to highlight uh, that value that um, sometimes pharmacists are being underutilized. Uh, as we progress throughout this pandemic, we'll see that pharmacists are really going to step into that lead role with regard to vaccinations. Uh, there are uh, legislation underway now to really empower pharmacists to be the major providers of, of vaccinations with regard to COVID-19. So we're excited about that. We are looking forward to really um, contributing to the healthcare team uh, towards positive patient outcomes. So, so toward the market perspective, I've read recently where Apple, Walgreen, um, sorry, Walmart and others are kind of getting into this space. How do you think that impacts the market, both in terms of competition as well as the quality of value that the patient gets from that type of activity in the market? Well, I think I, I too know of the um, the initiatives surrounding maybe Amazon or some of these other companies being uh, sort of uh, moving into the pharmaceutical market. And I think it's fine. I think that uh, what many people don't realize is that uh, pharmacists have a wide span of experience. Yep. And um, and we are going to step into those roles to be able to lead, if not partner, uh, with these other companies, these other venues that are moving into uh, the pharmacy uh, space. And so I think it's an opportunity for pharmacists to really show and and um, 
uh, exhibit the training that they've had. Uh, many people don't realize that pharmacists have uh, four to six years of training for the PharmD degree. Mm -hmm. And then many go on to complete residencies or fellowships that are one to two years in length. So there's quite a bit of training there uh, beyond uh, uh, that base that many people understand. And so that training includes not just understanding the, me the medications, the mechanism of action, uh, the side effects, but also health insurance. Mm -hmm. and um, economics mm -hmm. and the business side of pharmacy. And so when you think about an Amazon coming in uh, and partnering, pharmacists are equipped to say, this is where the future is going. This is how we connect the patient uh, with uh, this potential uh, service that may um, lead to better care. And so I think that it's an opportunity for pharmacists. I think pharmacists are ready to uh, step into those roles to lead these technology focused uh, initiatives and that it'll be a great time to partner uh, with pharmacists uh, to really make a difference. You know, I, I said Apple instead of Amazon, so I apologize for that. But the other value that I believe the pharmacists will bring is that they live in the community that they serve. So yes. they'll know the patients, they'll know all about, you know, they'll have additional relationships with them because again, you're picking up some other small household items. So, so there is a little bit more familiarity. There's a little bit more comfort around that. And um, th that's probably a value as well. Oh, definitely. So, so let's scoot over to another thing you mentioned earlier, Health Connect. Tell me about that. Uh, and, and let's start over again. What led to, what is Health Connect and what led to its development? Yes, well, we're thrilled about Health Connect. It's a web platform uh, that allows a connection between the patient, the pharmacist, and uh, the physician or other healthcare professionals. You can kind of think of it as a patient building their own healthcare team. Mm -hmm. uh, when we when we were brainstorming on the development of Health Connect, it really came out of some core problems in the healthcare system. Fragmented care. Uh, sometimes we'll go and we'll see our primary care physician. We may uh, be referred to a specialist for our disease state, and then we may go and pick up our prescriptions later on. Uh, perhaps we have to see a physical therapist, depending on the issue. But the 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 biggest problem is that oftentimes these individuals are not communicating. Uh, we'd love right. for uh, them to be discussing our care and making sure that there's no duplication to uh, at least converse a bit, but it's just not happening. Right. And so with Health Connect, our goal was to connect these individuals. And we know that these individuals are different for each person right? Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. four or five individuals may be different from my five, four or five individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. Health Connect is a platform that will allow these individuals to text each other, to chat with each other, to review uh, items pertinent to a patient's health care, whether it's um, uh, self-reported uh, lab values or um, uh, disease status and medications. But we have a second phase to Health Connect that we're thrilled about too, oh. that will allow patients to search for things like the lowest priced medication within cool. uh, five to 10 miles of their home or um, seeing where their prescription is in the queue so that they can save them some time in travel and, and perhaps pick up. And so we're, we're trying to think outside the box with this. We have conducted many, many interviews with patients as well as healthcare professionals back to that idea of empathy and really putting yourself in the user's shoes. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and we're hoping that it will be very helpful uh, once it's fully launched. Yeah, I remember the, um, one of your, your colleagues in this project was kind of describing her issue with her daughter and trying yes. to get the medicines situated and, and just the lack of communication and inclusion in that communication chain that caused her and you guys to kind of think through, there's got to be a better way. Uh, but again, in terms of the timing in light of where we are with the pandemic, this is perfect because I don't have to leave my house until I know it's ready. 
And I know it's ready because everything has been cleared from the payer, the provider, and the pharmacy. So uh, there, there's little drama that I have to walk into to, to get this thing complete. So, so that's exciting. Um, so, so clearly the, the customer here is broad and the quality of life that they receive as a result of this value, this, this web app, is tremendous. And the gap, I think everyone feels that pain in terms of, you know, I could do it the old way, which is zero fun, or I can do it uh, through this more enhanced uh, uh, internet driven way, which is faster uh, with, with fewer issues and conflicts. So that's pretty exciting. Yes, no, we're, I, looking, we're looking forward to it. So, so I think the, um, when I initially heard about this project, you guys were pursuing uh, and I guess at the time it was an NSF i uh, which is uh, for those who may not be aware, NSF has uh, a, a platform where they bring in technologies created primarily in higher education university environments. They invite um, a team of three, the team is composed of the inventor, uh, a student involved with this project, as well as a business person, a mentor, who is familiar with the region and can assist in uh, pushing this product toward market. Uh, it's a six week program, if I'm not mistaken. And the objective is not to sell the project or the product, it's to identify users of the product and what makes them excited about it. And then you refine the product to meet those, uh, and, and this is Lean Startup, so all transparency there. And this is the Steve Blank project. But it's interviewing at least 100 people to find out where they land on this. And, and again, this is a very unique opportunity to present that. Unfortunately, um, COVID kind of got in the way of the next opportunity to do to participate. But you did do a smaller version of this in the North Texas region. What was your finding on that? Or, or what did. was the result and of that conversation? Yes, we did. And, and my teammates for that, um, that NSF initiative were um, Dr. Jin Liu, who is a faculty member yeah. at the UNT Health Science Center, and also Dr. Minakshi uh, Srinivasan, who was a, mm -hmm. a, post, a postdoc, a researcher of mine. Um, but we interviewed uh, physicians, pharmacists, uh, in different settings, independent pharmacists as well as community pharmacists, and we also interview patients. And mm -hmm. we ask them, what are your barriers with regard to uh, being able to obtain your medications, being able to communicate across your different uh, healthcare professionals? And they told us. They were mm -hmm. very open um, to let us know. We also asked them about some of the features of the web platform, right. the, the app. And um, they gave us a lot of feedback on usability. Um, of course, uh, we want this uh, web platform to be HIPAA compliant. Uh, security is always a concern. Um, they also wanted to ensure that the uh, web platform had the ability to be disease specific. And so if I am a cancer patient, then um, I'm, I may have more healthcare professionals than the typical mm -hmm. patient. And they just wanted to ensure that you could have multiple providers right, uh, right. on the platform. And so we have added those features and it was invaluable to get that feedback. Um, and I encourage my students to do that too. There's nothing like getting real feedback through talking with the potential users of your uh, product. Sometimes people are rushing and they kind of skip that step. Um, yeah. But it really is critical to talk with those users, ask them, pilot test um, your product or service um, right. to find out uh, just just uh, items that you may not have thought about, you right. know, because oftentimes, you know, when you're thinking and you're brainstorming in your group, it's uh, so up close to you. Um, there may be small things that you can tweak right. that make a huge difference. Uh, in the user's life. You're exactly right. Connecting to the market, hearing directly from them, the good, the bad, the ugly of what your idea is and having the maturity and, and the professionalism to go back, tweak so that it meets a broader uh, uh, market uh, impact. So so that's, that's solid. So, yeah. so I think we've implicitly already answered what the gap is for the market of the product but in the development of the product, is there additional support that you need or 
input or what gap do you need in the continued or need filled in the continu continued development of the product? Yes. Yeah, so in our product development phase, we definitely have partnered with uh, some of the um, leaders at the Health Science Center. We mm -hmm. um, have definitely worked with you, um, Harold, and you've been a great business mentor to us. And um, and that's valuable, too, to have someone that can give you feedback along the way and input and someone to bounce your ideas off because uh, we are rolling our web platform out in phases. And so at each step along the way, we need that valuable feedback as we um, tweak it and um, improve it. So Wonderful. you definitely need those as you go. Yeah. Well, that that's exciting to know. So. Um, any information you can share, just forward it to me and I'll blast it out so that people will know that, you know, they, either they can log on or learn more about it because this is, to me, intriguing. And I think a lot of people will find it very interesting. And, and I would love to uh, maybe next quarter or so bring you back so that we can talk about what progress you've made. And maybe we can bring people in from industry to kind of talk about the other side of the, the, the equation on how they're adapting to to the future of health as we define it because by that time uh we're looking at you know some possible vaccine being uh presented to the people uh to, to uh, against covid uh if we're saying february march uh that's a possibility so mm -hmm. what are they doing to prepare and what challenges and how potentially health connect is assisting in that mix don't know Yes, I'd love to come back and join you to share updates. Um, we have uh, submitted uh, several grants and we can plan to continue submitting grants. One of our, our latest grant proposal that we sent to NIH relates to COVID-19 and right. uh, utilizing this platform to uh, connect with underserved populations. Uh, and, oh, and really outreach to them to gauge where they are, what are the barriers, um, to testing, to potentially even coming down the line vaccinations, because again, mm -hmm. this is a communication platform. And mm -hmm. so um, it really mm -hmm. can be helpful in, in connecting all of the healthcare professionals involved. Cool, cool. So we're getting to the end of our conversation and here comes the fun part. T what, what do you do for fun? You, you are yeah. spending a lot of time with students, you're spending a lot of time with this new idea. So. How do you relax? What do you do? Well, I love to meditate. Um, wow. I'm, I love reading and um, I love writing creatively. So oh. um, I write poetry uh, and, and I think it's a natural extension of me being a writer anyway. I write for research, but when on my yeah. downtime, I enjoy just writing creatively. Um, okay. now I can't travel as much now. One of my favorite um, travel spots is Hawaii, the big of island. Of course, yes. Um, and so we, we can't travel, but I do plan to take a road trip um, coming up here soon because, you know, you can always get out and just look at nature. And right. I'm one of those people who, who just, you know, really appreciates the little things. Right. And right. so um, I'll look forward to that. But I also enjoy movies. I'm a movie buff. What's so the latest movies good movie? and popcorn is, is, yes, is yes, one yes. of my favorites. So what's the latest movie that you, new or old, that you enjoyed? What, which one stands latest, out most? I like the movie Lean On Me. That is one of, yeah. uh, I've probably seen That's it a hundred times. I think it's because I'm a teacher at heart yeah. and yeah. I love to see students do well. I'm always cheering them on. And so um, I really, I've seen that movie so many yeah, times. it's a great flick. That's the one with Morgan Freeman, right? Yes. yes. So uh, is there a bat somewhere in the corner of your office or anything to <laughs> no, help persuade no. people? I'm nothing okay. like him. Not I'm nothing part. like him. I just Not like that. Okay. the idea of the students pressing forward okay. and, and um, just clearing it up, you know, yeah. having a goal. So, no, 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 I'm, I'm not putting any pain in the world. I understand. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm a big movie fan and, and uh, disappointed that Alamo Draft House, I think, is reduced to one uh, location in the North Texas region, but there is one here in Denton and I just go for movies and popcorn. That's that's how I enjoy the weekend and just take downtime. But mm -hmm. 
This has been yeah, I fun. love movies and popcorn. I mean, it's What's not to like about it? No. Right? <laughs> a little butter on it, and uh, I don't have to do it, so there's no chance of smelling burnt popcorn when it's all said and done. I may be sure. sharing too much, but no, I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today to kind of Thank share some you. of the exciting stuff going on. This is great. There's a lot of innovation going on in North Texas. Yes. And uh, this is just one way that we hope to kind of demonstrate and display it to the world. So uh, thanks a lot, Dr. White. All right. Thank you. It's a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.